We're in Windows 2012 R2 and I'm going to show you how to add a new virtual machine. So we've already installed Hyper-V Manager in our server manager by clicking Add Roles and Features and checking the Hyper-V box. We rebooted and now under the Tools menu, menu we see Hyper-V Manager. So all that's done already. If you uh, want to know how to do that, there's other videos uh, that I recorded earlier that you can do a quick search in this playlist and you'll be able to see how to do that. All right, so let's go ahead and create a new virtual machine. Right click on the server, click New Virtual Machine. Now we're going to do this in a cluster. You don't have to do it in a cluster, but if you do, this will help you uh, learn how to do that. And we're going to call this Hosted DC because we're going to make this a domain controller later on. We're just going to show you how to do the installation part here. We'll do the configuration in another video. So we don't want to store the virtual machine in the default location. We want to put it into our clustered storage. So let's go ahead and click on the C drive, clustered storage, volume one. And it'll automatically create a folder called hosted DC in there for us. All right, our startup memory, we're gonna change that to eight gigabytes. And our connection, uh, we're going to choose adapter one. If you don't see any adapters here, it means you need to go add a in the virtual uh, switch manager. Just go ahead and add that, and then you'll see the available network cards where you can add uh, a virtual switch. Go ahead and click next, and we have our virtual hard drive. I'm going to go a lot less than the 127 gigabytes. We don't really need that much just for a domain controller. Next, and we're going to choose to install an operating system but we're going to choose it from an ISO file that we saved to our desktop. You can also choose the DVD if you want. Click Browse. There's our ISO file right there. Click Next. And we can see everything is the way we want it to be. And we'll click Finish. All right, so everything's succeeded. Let's just go ahead and double click on it and start. And we should now see the operating system installing. If you don't, it just means you need to go to Media, DVD Drive, and insert your DVD at that point or your ISO file and choose it from the list. And sometimes you end up getting an error during the installation. And uh, But in this particular case, we're in good shape. It'll go ahead and complete installing. And we'll fast forward through the installation so you don't have to wait so long. All right, so we're going to choose our 2012 server. Install now. And we're going to get a, a few options here. So you want to make sure you choose the right option. All right, we're going to choose the standard server with a GUI. By default, it's going to choose the core version, which we don't want. We could also choose data center, which we're not using. So go ahead and click Next accept the license terms choose a custom install not an upgrade this is a fresh installation there's our 50 gigabyte drive you do not need to format it but if you choose next and it won't let you uh, uh, go forward then go ahead highlight it delete the partition and then re-add it with the new button and format it but normally you don't have to do that And now comes the installation. All right, so our Windows Server 2012 standard finished installing. Now it's rebooting. And then we'll go ahead and put in our passwords. And uh, then we'll go for to cluster it from there. One of the new features in this version is you no longer have to install the integration services setup disk. So you can go back and forth between the Hyper-V and your host. It automatically installs that for you. All right, let's go ahead and put in our password. Put that twice. And we are ready to log in. Now, once that's all logged in, we're going to want to cluster this particular uh, Hyper-V. 
And if you're not using a cluster, you, you can stop now and just continue on. But if you are using a cluster, then you'll want to know how to do that. So even if I close this window, everything continues to run, as you can see in this corner here. So what I want to do now is I want to right click on roles, click configure roles. Next, scroll down to where it says virtual machine. Next, and it, you see it adds in hosted DC. This is our virtual machine that's running on this host, but we're going to add it to the cluster where all the servers are. So we'll go ahead and check that box saying yes. Now this part can take anywhere from a few seconds to a couple of minutes. And hopefully it'll be safe, successful, and it is. Successfully configured the role and click finish. So now that my Hyper-V is clustered, I'll want to manage it all from uh, the failover cluster manager. I no longer want to manage it through Hyper-V because I now have options here that I don't have there. Such as if I double click on the machine, it used to open up the console, but now it opens up something else. It opens up a uh, preferred owners list. So I'm going to go ahead and check Hyper-V1 and Hyper-V2. And if I want, I can reverse those roles just by highlighting it and choosing up or down. And then I can also go over to failover. And when Hyper-V1 fails, we can say, go ahead and allow uh, fail back or fall back. And we can say immediately or we can say after several minutes or hours. And I'm going to say immediately and click apply. All right, now if we want to open up the console, we can either click on the link there or right click and just choose connect. And now we can uh, go ahead and configure our server to do whatever it is we need it to do. So that's how you cluster a Hyper-V in Windows 2012 R2.